It is a joy for me to welcome you to your cathedral and to have this celebration here in the context of the seat of our diocese and to celebrate, anticipate the Feast of St. Andrew with all of you who have dedicated yourselves to this work. And so, if you will allow me for a moment to depart from the, the common kind of preaching that happens in this setting, to speak directly to the Brotherhood about our ministry together. It is essential for the life and work of our, di di our diocese, for the ministry of the Brotherhood of St. Andrew to flourish. It is essential for our serving God's mission in the neighborhoods and communities in which we serve for the Brotherhood of St. Andrew to be faithful to its mission. And so on an evening like this when we come together to be in the midst of our diocese, I call upon you to not only celebrate the installation of officers and the gathering together of marching into the church with great pageantry, but to recognize the essential element behind what it is we do. And it is found in that gospel passage. It is the introduction of the person of Jesus Christ to the rest of humanity. That's really what the calling of Peter, Andrew, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee is all about. It is the introduction of a personal relationship with Jesus to humanity. I would dare say, my friends, that in the ebb and flow of the lives of the parishes in which you find yourself, introducing Jesus to the people of your community is not high on the list. The clergy of this diocese will ask you to do some work. They may ask you to get involved in some fundraising. They may ask you to come and set up tables and chairs. They may call you and say, the bishop is coming for confirmation. We need your help. We need you to be present at a diocesan convention or some other large diocesan event. But the essential mission the calling to which you and I are called is missed in all of that. So let me say something to you that's going to be a bit controversial. Stop doing the fundraising. It's not your job. That is not stewardship. Stewardship is when we give our time and our talent and our treasure for God's mission in the communities in which we live. And quite often it happens in our parish churches, but not always. Raising funds may be someone's job, but it's not yours.
So those of you who are in positions of leadership, go home tonight, text your rector, send them an email, call her on the phone, and say, the bishop just fired us. We are not your fundraisers. You want to have a bus trip? Take everyone to some place where we can do mission together. Stay out of places like Atlantic City. The Brotherhood doesn't belong there. And our parish churches should not be raising funds there. The Chancellor of the Diocese keeps telling me that although I have the moral authority, I don't have the legal authority to make it stop. But I'm working on it. <laughs> Gambling of any sort may be recreational, but it's not holy. And it's not of the church. And it has nothing to do with you saying to your neighbor, come here, let me introduce you to Jesus. Which is the primary call of every one of us in this cathedral. Second, my brothers and sisters, I need your help. The last five and a half years, I've been trying to start this, this revolution in which we act in all the settings of our parishes like the church. Where church isn't just what we do on Sunday, but we are a force for change and reconciliation in our neighborhoods. Where people trust us and not shy away from us. They don't see us coming and imagine that all we want is to get them in church so we can get their pocketbook. If the Brotherhood of St. Andrew comes up with some ideas for evangelizing, I'll find the money to make it happen. But you've got to find a way to do it. Third, and I know that all of you know this already, that early in December, Father uh, Matero Sabuni is going to be with us in order to introduce the concept of members of the Brotherhood becoming my agents for prison ministry in this diocese. We're real good at incarcerating our young folk, but as a diocese, we are terrible at ministering. We have almost no one, no one, going into the jails in the city or run by the state. We have no one from our diocese ministering to the families of our people who are incarcerated. And in December, we're going to begin to change that. And I am inviting you, the Brotherhood of St. Andrew, to take hold of this ministry primarily under the guidance of Father Patero Sabuti, who's coming to give us his time and his energy and his expertise. Because you have to be trained to do this work. Because if you came to me and said, Bishop, I need a favor. Could, could, I, I wrote a note to my wife. Could, could you get it to my wife? I would take that note and I'd make sure I delivered it. But if someone who was incarcerated asked you to do that and you did it, you'd be committing a crime. Because you don't know that that man who's just asked you to do that favor is in jail because he beat his wife. You need to know the difference. So we're going to train anyone in this diocese who's associated with the Brotherhood of St. Andrew 
to be ministers for our emerging prison ministry. I would rather ask you to do that with me than to raise one dime to support ministry. Leave that to the people who teach stewardship. And don't be enticed by, well, it's all for camaraderie. It's all building up the, the, the social life of the parish. You want to build the social life of the parish? Have a dance every Saturday night and invite the whole neighborhood. Open up your buildings. Make sure the place is spick and span and open up the buildings and invite everybody in. If we only socialize with ourselves, we're going to be a dying breed. We've got to open our places up to the neighborhoods that we serve. That's what's being the church in the midst of the community. And so I think I've caused enough trouble. But I can tell you that I waited to share this with you tonight rather than saying all of this convention. The news of this will break tomorrow and Tuesday. And then right after everyone's done digesting their turkey on Thanksgiving Day, I'll start getting very strange emails from clergy saying, Bishop, did you really tell those guys that they're not supposed to be good? You darn bet I am. And it's even being recorded. <laughs> so here's the deal. We need the men of the church and the women who support us that you're willing to 
sacrifice, respectfully saying to them, Father, Mother, I don't think that's a good idea. See, I would rather someone come to me and say, Bishop, I don't think that's a good idea, rather than saying nothing and then on the way home, making my real opinion known. We have to put an end to that. We've got to grow to trust each other. We need to build trust that is built on mutual respect and prayer and care for one another. And we have to teach our young people that. Our young folk need to know that they can have a, a respectful voice in the midst of the church because the church is, is who they are. When you and I wonder what's happening in the world around us, we don't need to look past our interactions with other adults in the church. Our young folk are watching us. And they're learning some bad lessons. So I'd ask you to pray for our clergy, to support them and encourage them. And for those of you who are wise enough, every once in a while, give them a little corrective as well. Tell them that you love them, even though you don't agree with them sometimes. Tell them that you're praying for them and will support them because you trust who they are. Trust is built on that mutual respect and prayer. We will strengthen the bonds in our diocese if our clergy and our lay leadership understand that they're prayed for and loved. So I've asked a lot of you the one thing I can share with you that you can count on is my support of your ministry. As you have ideas, as you have concerns, as you have, have needs, let me cooperate with that. I can't help and do that which I don't know. So if you have ideas, if you have concerns, if you have hopes and projects, let's talk about it. You have leadership that has access to meeting with me. Let's move this thing forward. And let's make sure that on that date in September, I think it's the 6th of December, let's make sure everyone shows up. Let's get this thing to off to a running start. It's men and women, by the way. It's not just the men. I've got an amen corner here somewhere. <laughs> but we, we need to have people show up and begin to take this training. And then we'll worry about how we're going to get access to all these places. With Father Spoonie at the helm, not a door will be closed to us. So there they were, Andrew and his brother Peter, minding their own business, and Zebulun's two sons mending their nets. Jesus came along and said, follow me. Jesus has come along tonight and said to you and to me, 